Hey guys, welcome to our next lesson. So today we're looking at Coulomb's law, right? And Coulomb's law has to do with charges, right? So before now, you should know that charges are either positive or negative, right? So charge actually, so if we have two charges, right, that comes close together, depending on their charge, if it's positive or negative, it experiences a force. So we know two of the same charges, close proximity, will actually be a repulsive force. If it's two opposite charges, then we have an attractive force that seeks to pull them together. Right? So we now can look at Coulomb's law that explains that force that's between two charges that their electric field actually touches. So once their electric field touch, then they will experience that force. So let's see what what the, the law states on that force value. Right? So Coulomb's law states, the force of attraction or repulsion and repulsion is proportional to the product of their charges and inverse proportional to the square of their distances apart. Right? So if we have Q1 and Q2, Q1 is negative, Q2 is positive, then there is a force of attraction between these two charges right? that is felt between both charges here, right? and that is known as F. Right? So F would be the, charge, the force, which is equal to K, Q1, Q2 over R squared. Now, K is Coulomb's constant, which is 9 times 10 to the 9 Newton meter squared per Coulomb squared. The Q1 and Q2 are the value of the charges, right? So Q1 will have a charge, Q2 will have a charge, right? And then R now is the distance that the charges are from each other, right? So this is our equation that we use to find Coulomb's law. So let's look at a simple question, how to apply his law or his equation to find in the force, right? So example, so if we have two charges, Q1 being plus 6 nanocoulombs and Q2 being plus 4 nanocoulombs of a distance 2 centimeters apart, what is the force between them, right? So first thing we note is the two charges are of the same Right? So this is a repulsive force. So that means they're pushing each other further away from each other, right? So the N here represents nano, and nano is a prefix that means 1 times 10 to the negative 9, right? So we know that Coulomb's law is F equals KQ1, Q2 over R squared, right? So the K is 9, point, 9 times 10 to the 9, Q1 is 6 nano, so it's times 10 to the negative 9, q2 is 4 nano times 10 to the negative 9, divided by r squared. Now, r is in centimeters, right? We always use base units for our quantities, unless stated otherwise. So, centimeter would be changed to, to meters. So, in this case, we divide centimeter by 100, right? So, we get 0 0.02 meters. So we have 0 0.02 meters and it is squared, right? So when we divide this, we get 5.4 times 10 to the negative 4 newtons, right? So you notice this value is a very small value, right? So because it's just two charges, two charges that their value is not big enough, right? So they experience just a minor force that is felt, right? So let's look at something more complicated, right? So let's look at three charges that are arranged in a right angle triangle format, right? So we have a six microcoulombs, positive one, a positive four microcoulombs, and a negative two microcoulombs, right? So the distance between positive four and positive six is 10 centimeters. The distance between positive four and negative two is 10 centimeters as well. Right? So we need to find what's the force that's experienced by or negative two micro coulomb charge, right? So in this case, it's way difficult than just putting in our numbers in the equation, right? So the first thing that we need to do is to isolate each charge based on the charge that we're focusing on. So we're focusing on our two coulomb charge, right? 
So we're going to take the 4 with the 2, and then we take the 6 with the 2. Right? So let's go with the 4 and 2. So the first thing is to know what direction is that force acting. So it's a plus and it's a negative, so we have an attractive force, right? Now the attractive force direction would be, it's going to the direction of the one that is the high, right? So the higher value one, it's going to that direction, right? So this is a four, this is a, a two, right? So the two will be attracted to the, to the four. And we're going to call that F1. So that's the first force, F1 force, right? So let's find what F1 is. So we're using Coulomb's equation. So we substitute the K, right? Q1, Q2, any one you can use because it's a product. So it's 4 times 10 to the negative 6 because micro is 10 to the negative 6. And 2 times 10 to the negative 6 over... 10 centimeters the distance between them, so we change that to meter, which is 0 0.10, and we square that, right? So in this case, F1 would be 7.2 newtons, all right? So that's just what. So we isolated this one and focus only on these, right? So now, since we have that force, we're going to isolate this one and focus on these two, right? So again, the two charges are different, are different sign. So we have an attractive force, right? But it's going to go to the, to the six, right? Because the two is less than the six. So the two will be attracted to the six. And we're going to call that F2, all right? So now F2 value will be K, nine times 10 to the nine times 6 times 10 to the negative 6 times 2 times 10 to the negative 6 divided by the distance that they are apart. Now you notice the question did not give us, but because this is a right angle triangle, we can find the distance, right? So the distance there would be the square root of 10 squared plus 10 squared using Pythagoras theorem, right? And that, sorry, and that distance will give us 14.14, right? So then we change that to meters, we get this. And we square this. So F2 value would be 5.40 newtons, right? So now we have F1 and F2. But the question asks us to find the net force. The net force means what's the total force that these two will have on that object right there or that charge right so now we have to find because f1 only has a horizontal component so it only has an x value right there is no y but f2 has a y and an x so we have to resolve f2 in terms of the y and the x value right so we're going to draw f2 alone right so we need to find the y and the x. So F2 is 5.4, right? So this angle here, we need to know what that angle is, which is basically this angle from our triangle here, right? So to find theta, right, we're going to use a 2 tenths, which is opposite and adjacent. So that's tan inverse. 10 over 10, which is 1, so tan inverse of 1 is 45 degrees. So this angle is 45, all right? So now let's look further. All right, so now let's find the, the y component first. So we're going to call it F2 y component. Y is opposite, so it will be F2 sine theta. So F2 is 5.40 sine 45 degrees, and we get 3.82 newtons, right? And then we do the same for the X, which is F2 cos theta, because F X is now adjacent to the angle. 
So F2 is 5.40 cos sine 45. Cos 45 and sine 45 is the same answer. So we're going to get the same answer for the X component as well. Alright. So now that we have the both components, alright, we notice X component will be going that way, Y component up. So this X component and F1 is going in the same direction, both going to the left. Alright. So we can find the net force. So the net F for the X component would be the 7.2 plus the 3.82 and we're going to get 11.02 newtons, right? And we only have a Y because F1 there's no Y, so the net Y would be 3.82, right? So now that figure now gives us Y, X, right? So the X is 11.02 and our Y is 3.82, right? So going between this would be our resultant R, which is our net force, right? So the net force, right? Because it's going to create the right angle triangle, Pythagoras theorem again, it will be 11.02 squared plus 3.82 squared and we get 11.66 newtons. So this is our net force that's acting on the negative two microcoulombs based on those two charges. But finally we find the angle and we're going to find this one. Or you could find this one, doesn't matter, right? So you indicate on your diagram which angle you're finding. So theta would be, we're going to use cos. So cos inverse adjacent side 3.82 over the hypotenuse, which is R, 11.66, and that's equal to 70.88 degrees, right? So the final statement you would have is that the net force acting on the negative two microcoulombs is 11.66 newtons, acting 70.88 degrees from our vertical, right? And that would be your answer. Alright, thank you very much guys for watching today. Hope you understand about Coulomb's law and charges, the forces between these charges, and see you guys next time.